So this is the sculpture for Robin Hyde, which was the pen name of Iris Wilkinson. Uh, I'll just read it out first and then we could talk about her. Yet I think, having used my words as the kings used gold, ere we came by the rustling jest of the paper kings, I who am overbold will be steadily bold in the counted tale of things. And that's from a poem that's called Words. I'm not sure where it was originally published, but it's in her collected poems, which is called Young Knowledge, which Michelle Leggett collected in about 2003, which she edited. So, so this is one of the sculptures that isn't about Wellington. This is more, it, well, it's, a, it's one of the trickier quotations, really. Yeah. People often stand there with their brows knitted, not quite sure what to make of it. It's one of my favourites. I think it's a beautiful setting. It's in between Te Papa and the harbour. Um, it's on a long, semicircular uh, seating area, so people are often sitting sit, sitting around there with lots of um, flaxes and greenery mm. behind it. Mm. Um, I, every time I read it, I think, oh, I've almost understood what this means. <laughs> I never I never quite get it, but I love the sound of it. No, we've talked about it when we've done the walk, and we always yes. just keep trying to unravel it. But I, th- I think it's to do with, with, with how she saw herself as a writer. Yeah. And she was just a remarkable figure, I think, in New Zealand writing, despite the fact she had a very short life. And she was very much a Wellington writer. So she was born in South Africa, but the family came to New Zealand when she was quite young. And she grew up in Wellington. And she was a journalist. So she was just a remarkable person because she was... She was... Fighting a lot of battles as a single woman trying to earn a living in the Depression and as an unmarried mother when there was a lot of stigma against that. And in fact, many people, including some of her own family, never knew about her child. No, no. Which seems impossible to believe. And, and she was quite brave in the, that she she wrote serious stuff, but she also wrote for, like, I think, Truth or for ladies' magazines because she had to earn a living. In contrast with no... You know, Catherine Mansfield had a stipend. Robin Hyde had to support herself. Mm. And her, her, fam- her family had no money, no so money, they so couldn't help. Was, yeah. 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 So yeah. she wrote on a huge range of different things. She wrote historical fiction and a war story, which you'd think she'd been in World War One on the trenches. And she wrote fantasy and travel, all sorts of things. And then she decided to go to England. And on the way, she did a side trip into China despite the fact there was a war on and became a war correspondent basically. Went to England and things did not go well for her really. So she was sick and had no money and had nowhere to live and that's where she died. She was really brave, wasn't she? She was very brave. (laughs) And talented. Mm. But also she had her um, a leg, gammy leg that was never quite mm. um, operated on but never really so she was always so she had a physical disability physical, as well very very yeah. challenging disability yeah. so but I, th- I think she's got a very modern voice and she had a she had a heart for the underdogs she was concerned with people that were um, disadvantaged